Hello and welcome to Rise of Humanity. I am your host, Chris Karamaya, and for today's episode, I'm joined by my guest, Molly Jane Robertson. Molly is the founder of All to Love, a spiritual lifestyle brand and movement dedicated to its mission of helping people to live from a place of love, freedom, fearlessness, and abundance so we can all together create a harmonious and sustainable way of living. Molly is also an inspirational speaker uh, expert yoga and meditation guide, a transformational coach and author of the book The Fearless Life Guide and All to Love Project which is a step-by-step -step guide to empowerment and true freedom. Molly's work is very much in alignment with the message here at Rise of Humanity so uh, Molly it's great to be able to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's, it's lovely to be here. Awesome. So I'd like to start by talking about um, what your vision is for the new paradigm, the new way of living uh, for humanity that you see coming forward, and what kind of needs to happen. Because you obviously got a um, you got a profound message uh, of the way that people can live. So I'd love to just start digging into um, you know what the what the potential is and what the vision is that you have for humanity in the future sure i mean all of it's really based on my own intuitive journey and learning and understanding um about this reality ultimately and a lot about consciousness and perception and from quite a young age i had these inner shifts which people would probably call spiritual awakenings which when i looked at the world when i faced the world and felt the compassion in my heart i knew intuitively that there needed to be a paradigm shift which basically took us from a belief system of fear and separation to a belief system of love and unity and so ultimately with however seven seven billion plus and growing human beings so individuated aspects of consciousness on this planet what i'm what i'm continuously having to let go into is that this is a sort of divine plan and so every human at some point on their journey is going to undergo some sort of spiritual awakening which energetically shifts them from a perspective of fear to a perspective of love. So all of us, ultimately what we're doing is sharing that experience with one another, which is ushering the expansion or ushering the greater awakening across the globe. And so how that will look on a kind of practical level is exactly what we're doing, connecting with more like minds, sharing our message in new, new ways with the internet, which is amazing, which is what is really helping to accelerate the movement and then to and, and like myself being guided to an actual base of land right and and a potential to hold space for people because part of the healing journey is very much to me healing right so perceiving through fear is a disconnection from the feeling body from the emotional body it's a denial of that kind of divine aspect and connection so as as we begin to reconnect a lot of our healing comes through allowing ourselves to penetrate our emotional depth from from a place of love and understanding and that process is very unique for each each one of us so how we share it and how we verbalize it is a big part of spreading the message right and and spreading understanding of because all of us have those slight different perspectives which again bring clarity to our own you know whoever of the the mass is kind of drawn to us is is who aligns with the messaging does that does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely it's amazing yeah i'm completely um completely like just get that totally and i think that's we're kind of in similar similar places like in our viewpoints on you know what people are going through and what needs to happen isn't that what's beautiful about this is that we've aligned on the internet and are now having a conversation which is really very profound. And this is part of the new paradigm is that we're penetrating veils. And so how we're, how we're beginning to connect with one another 
um, is even though it might not look at just yet, it's very explosive. The energies that we're starting to move into are very heightened. So this this is also for me part of connecting with with more people is so that we can continue to ground these energies mm. and kind of kind of start getting excited mm. about, about what's coming for us. You know, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's yeah, there's huge shifts coming, and I am excited, very excited to see what what happens and to be a part of it but i know that we're gonna to have to go through some turbulence as well but if you can keep keep that higher perspective and uh just lock into that as much as you can to see see things from a big picture you can you can always see that there's kind of order trying to emerge from the chaos yes exactly that's the point of being able to sit with what we're carrying energetically, emotionally, mentally, is I got a couple things there. It's like we're never, as individuals, we're never going to be given more than we can handle. And, it, you know, remembering it is a co-creative process. So there, are, there, there can be times where we just ask ourselves, you know, like, okay, I need a break or I need some help or you know, just being very real about where we're at and, and not falling into those, again, those illusions of having to be authorities or having to be leaders or having to really attach ourselves to any roles, just being human beings saying, you know, this is where I'm at and getting real about, about the process and the fact that there are practical things or organizing practical action steps, um, you know, on an environmental level, on, on very, on an economic level. So being able to, be practical and again this is about aligning with tribes and and pioneering new models for for the world as well that serve that serve as many people as possible obviously <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah i love what you said earlier about the fear the fear piece because i think even though i mean the way i kind of see it is that even though fear in the moment is feels extremely real and extremely intense i kind of see it from a spiritual level as it's kind of just an illusion it's like an it's an error that or an untruth that you've bought into and it's not your it's not your true core who you are it's just a uh, just an error in thinking really um but yeah is that uh, are you kind of on a similar wavelength to that is because you talk about fear a lot in your work obviously i sure do and so this is again to do with like various aspects of, of my journey and learning and getting pretty far out there as far as like different people's perspectives about what's going on in the universe or the galaxy and stuff like that. And so, and, and trying to, you know, involve science, trying to make it kind of believable for people, but what's actually happening when we're, so I call them the emotional storms. When, when we're having a reaction to something that seems a little bit over, overreaction. You know, when we end up in those fights that we're just like, ah, and then you're wondering what the hell is happening? Why am I doing these things? Why am I acting out these patterns? Is that what we're, what we're realizing is that scientifically we're as individual beings, we carry the genes of our ancestry. And if we believe in past life and reincarnation or even multidimensionality in our, in our coding, we're carrying those imprints. So part of my intuitive knowing through sitting in my own emotional storms is that my physical body is purging or outworking or clearing or healing the fear perception program. Us opening up and being vulnerable and starting to soften and starting to be more in the present moment, starting to deal with our emotions in a harmonious way is how we can as individuals collectively shift the backlog and start to clear the way so that we open up our visions to, and our beingness to higher manifestations. What's your kind of take then on dealing with those emotional s storms? Because I think people have a tendency to, even though it's not our optimal state and it's not the way we want to live, I think people have a big tendency to resist them as though they are bad like this is bad i shouldn't be experiencing this what's your take on um on that whole thing of dealing with negativity basically just reminding ourselves that we are 
I want to say just the totality of all experiences. And if we can just sort of reiterate it intellectually over and over again that, you know, if we deny and resist our emotions, we're going to perpetuate a negative or toxic cycle, right? So recognizing that this whole denial of the emotional body, this whole thinking that our emotions are bad, full stop, we're the ones who've labeled our emotions as good or bad or right or wrong. But when we start to shift the perspective, ultimately we can, we, we have a greater capacity to hold space for our emotions, which means we start to love and accept even the negative emotions. So I'm at a place in my journey where I'm like, I almost embrace when I start to feel it come up because I know there's another clearing happening. And I actually see a lot of beauty in the release. I feel a lot of divine connection when I'm in the middle of a, of a cry, of a really good cry or maybe a really good scream. Like it actually feels good to me because I know at the end of it, I'm going to feel lighter. I'm going to have a new perspective. I'm going to see, you know, like it's, it's going to clear. So now that I've made that perspective shift, it's way easier for me to hold space. And then the proof is in the put. So we live by example. So, so all we do is keep talking about it and keep permissioning one another to feel and be vulnerable and, and remind ourselves it's okay to feel the negative. If we don't feel it, we keep denying it, which means we keep unconsciously manifesting it into our reality, which none of what we kind of, we have to accept, okay, we just don't want that anymore. So, so we have to be, we have to be responsible. And the, and the, and part of the practice for me has been meditation, yoga, and relaxation, implementing those in, a, in, a, in my daily life. Yeah. One of the things I've, and the meditation stuff, we can talk about that more because that's been a big thing for me as well. But one, just like quickly talk on that point. One of the things that I've noticed, a big shift that I've made is that we can, when you experience a negative emotion, it leads to negative thoughts, which leads to more negative emotions, which leads to more negative thoughts. And you get so caught up in your thoughts that you forget that your body is actually, <laughs> is actually objectively broadcasting this extremely low vibrational signal. And it's like you're trying to justify in your mind and fix it in all these thoughts. And it's like if you just stop mm -hmm. and feel into your body, it's like, wow, I'm sending out. A really negative vibration and that's been a big shift well, for me there, Chris, that that's a huge piece so that's part of the foundational pillar of sitting and properly clearing an emotional storm is you have to you have to recognize like i.e notice the negative thought stream that is attached to that emotional frequency and then detach from the thought so you have to consciously be like no thought I'm not going to buy into you. I'm not going to blame this or blame that. I'm going to just let this emotion do its thing. And then the beauty is that if you can step back and take a few breaths and start just processing the emotion, eventually you have access to insight, clarity, and divine wisdom. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> just... um. If you could just talk about um, just like your meditation practice and what kind of shift that's created, because that's definitely, I think it's such a powerful tool. And I think people sometimes aren't quite aware of how powerful it is because they're just told, you know, or they just think, oh, it's about relaxation. And, you know, I don't really know why I'm doing it. But um, for me personally, it, when I finally latched on to the power of it, it really created a big shift. So I'd be interested to to hear like what, what it does for you really. Yeah. Like just for sure the same, like I can see distinctive sh actual shifts happen in my life, like after significant meditation trainings or something. So like, and, and I could honestly say that like one way I could perceive it is like every time I'd have like another shift or a deepening of my understanding of, of the power of meditation in the context of my life, I would almost in like, I'd, I'd feel this like stepping into my power and then like just basically be more present. And, and then for me, it was about kind of really making sense of it for myself in, in alignment with, aspects of law of attraction, um, you know, co-creativity and getting centered, really getting to know myself, you know, some of those fundamental teachings, know thyself. So even in, in my meditation practice, eventually I sort of fell away from all other teachings. 
I just sit and it is what it is. And I'm aware for me, it's about just sitting and listening. And I think eventually what happens is that your, your whole life sort of becomes fairly meditative because my, my, my primary focus, my dominant focus is an inner focus. I'm listening and, and feeling and sensing and all of that in, in respect to everything I'm perceiving. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's been my experience. It, it, it changes the way you go about your day and it, regardless sure. <laughs> yeah and regardless of what technique or meditation practice you use i mean generally on the whole there's always going to be on a scientific level there's always going to be some sort of rewiring of the brain to be less mm -hmm. less chaotic like when you mm -hmm. close your eyes you and move into a deeper meditation you you're essentially turning off your physical senses which and then you tune in as you say like you tune into that to uh, that more f just feeling way of living um, and not mm -hmm. always defining yourself as physical matter. And then that opens up just a completely new intuitive mm -hmm. way of living really. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like you were asking about the new way of being or like, how does that look? And that's, I guess that's part of it is that we come into that recognition, which is really beautiful because it's like coming into a sense of sovereignty or like mm -hmm. alignment or, you know, whatever people want to call it. But then being able to have really harmonious, clear encounters with people, mm. that, you know, from a, per that it's just, it's just really beautiful. And that's why it's undeniable. And the more you do it, the more you're like, yep, I'm going to keep doing this. And then there's no turning back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once you get, once you realize the power of it, it's just like, I want to do this all the time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. And it seems so weird because sometimes I just remember what it might look like from like another perspective and yeah. be like, wow, you just sit around a lot and you just like relax a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I because it's about channeling like the like the, the good potent energy, you know, it's about kind of channeling that. So you want to really and realizing your manifestation power. And so the more you realize it, the more you want to get clear about it which which simply requires a lot of focus you know a lot of loving yoking of that of that connection mm. yeah that's awesome do you kind of set up in there do you have a morning routine well i do actually and it's not necessarily like super conventional but at yeah. the present moment my morning routine is like waking up um having my coffee getting myself ready and then probably having like just a little meditation and either going live. Now I wake up really early these days as well. I've been waking up at like 3 30, 4 o'clock. <laughs> and I'll start going live. So those hours just seem to be the intuitive optimal time to be channeling the messages that I want to be broadcasting on my on various sites. Mm. So I just kind of allow the inspiration to come and then go, you know, share on the different channels. And then you know, maybe have a yoga practice, have a smoothie, talk to my mom, like, you know, yeah, just, yeah. just normal, normal stuff. And then, and then flow through the day. And some days have more, you would say productive work. Um, and other days are a lot of actually heavy processing, you know, like I do, I do on the regular sit with emotional stuff and look at it. And what I realize is that practice is also helping us really hone those, I guess you could say broader skills like those mm -hmm. next level intuitive abilities and psychic abilities. And it's, so it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you, do you have like a, um, a structured kind of week in general, or do you find that you've, as you like, the more you've meditated, the more you'd start living like in a state of, I suppose, like intuitively and with more flow, you kind of just open to what, what's yep. to come do you just create space yeah it's pretty much pure flow so what came it, it, um living intuition is a lesson in the book and it is i mean i've had to surrender i just have to keep surrendering so i've i do really live in the flow i i i put things in diaries to remind myself of what you know where i have to be at certain points because i still teach yoga at yotown and I have my own retreats. And so things get organized, but it, 
it has become more and more in the present moment. Like randomly over the Christmas holidays, I just redid my website. Like I just spent mm. like 24 hours or 48 hours straight pretty much just be like, Bleh. like redoing the <laughs> whole thing to just give it a vamp up. And, and so the flow takes me into those sort of intensive zones. Um, and then, and I find myself really naturally without having to be rigid about it. I naturally am inspired to send shout outs. I'm, and as far as the sharing at this point on my journey, I am just having to wake up and share every single day. Mm. So the broadcasting, the messaging, the sharing what's inside of me is just coming out in a, in a daily way. Yeah, that's cool. That's definitely something. Mm, it is shift. cool. Yeah, that, that's a shift that I'm starting to make now because I think, the, well, the last few years for me have been very internal, like moving inward and mm. building that perception of the universe and reality and now I'm kind of making that shift where I'm getting the signal that it's time to start broadcast broadcasting my unique message so I'm mm -hmm. really getting into that flow of you know just just posting every day that I can and yeah. having something unique to share and it's uh, yeah it's cool awesome that you're in that place as well <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I think it's the times for some reason I was thinking about, like, I, um, I'm not in any way, any kind of expert, but I do like dabbling in astrology. Mm -hmm. And what you said made me think of like, it is something about the times we're in. There's something about Aquarius and Leo again, don't quote me on any of this, but it is all about our, our ability to kind of express our individual truth, like really come out mm -hmm. and start expressing that and at the same time coming together in community you know it's almost like you can see it by us starting to go okay this is who i am like <laughs> now we're shining our light facing those fears more people can see us and so we start to align with one another you know yeah. and and that's sort of like the beauty is that the stars are aligned right so we're yeah. actually living in a time where a new cycle is very much being born and, and it's supported by things like astrology and even a lot of like, you know, ancient wisdom and prophecy and stuff like mm. that. So, you know, we have a, we have a, a lot of grounding, but positive work to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's definitely a lot of truth behind all that work. And I think there are a lot of, there's a lot going on outside the earth's energies that we aren't, well, unless you study these works that we aren't even aware of and that we can't even control that are influencing the way that we feel every day. And I think having that, having that awareness is, uh, it's good. It's good to know that there's things going on that we yes. just have to respond well, to. It's interesting you say that, right? Because I'm very aware of some of those and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to say that a lot of my recent intuitive shifts, which, which have been fairly emotionally intense, there's mm. also been some divine guidance about like, we're good. Like a lot of those sort of, so those darker energies are really beginning to lift out, mm. are really beginning to kind of be cleared out, despite what we might be seeing <laughs> sometimes into out in the external the inner, like what you said out there, maybe think of like, yeah, the heavens are cleared. Like we're good to go. The light has been given the green light to go ahead. Mm. So this idea of anchoring these new energies by continuing to follow and, and let go and listen to the intuition and doing all this stuff is really, is really making changes. So yeah. 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 yeah it sounds like, yeah, we're on pretty similar wavelengths. So I'm, I'm pretty extremely optimistic about the future of humanity, but at the same time, Me too. I think, yeah, <laughs> I, you, got, you gotta be, you yeah, gotta be. Yeah. I can feel it. But I think at the same time, we are at extremely critical juncture, like in human history. Like I think we're reaching like the peak of chaos, like that's ever mm -hmm. been on earth. And I think, now is that is that time where we have to make that shift and i think if we do which i think we will i'm confident we will the what will transpire from that will be absolutely incredible like a completely new world but i think now really is that time where the, the future of humanity will be decided in like the next i think in the next 
probably less than 100 years <laughs> that's the way i see oh, it for anyway. sure for sure i think i think we're like i for me personally i'm like it's on you know it's happening mm -hmm. we're doing this the shift is happening and we're, we're now just sort of grounding down we're anchoring the energies and like what you said as well like all of the intensity on the external is really what's creating the the mounting pressure from within the from within humans mm. That, that mounting pressure inside is the stress and all of the chaos is are sort of the lid is lifting. You could say, mm. you know, the pressure's building so much that the lids are just popping off everywhere. And we, we, people like us now, which we are awakening more and more around the world are in, we, we sort of intuitively know what we have to do. Right. Mm. So it's like, it's like, okay, get ready. We're ready. It's time to ground down and it's time to be prepared to hold space for people. It's time to shine light and let people heal because we've, you know, we can see that we've done enough. We've been chasing the fear for long enough, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever we've been, we've been chasing the, the illusion for long enough and it's just not serving. So we have to evolve. Yeah. You know, we have to let, we have to let the divine love energy heal us. Yeah. And and knowing in a very deep deep way we are safe. We are safe to be here. The earth the earth as a being herself knows what is happening, knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So and that is this idea of like we're rising into our into our more divine state. So men and women are just going to be more powerful and going to be able to hold space for more and more people. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. And I think um, I think now's like a time where especially people need to become extremely aware of their thoughts and their beliefs and the energy that they're sending out because I think yep. it's the way the universe works is that you, you create essentially self-fulfilling prophecies in your life. So if you believe, if you sit and watch the news every day and believe that the world's a bad place, even if you don't want it to be, you're actually in that moment creating that reality and sending that vibration out into the universe so if it's so important now that people become aware of what they're actually thinking so they're not create re, recreating that reality over and over again where the world is a bad place <laughs> exactly well that's that's part of the reason part like my journey i've been unplugged from the mainstream for quite a few years now and it's it's a foundational pillar it's one of the first like steps in the fearless life guide uh -huh. unplug like when you understand consciousness in a little bit better way you realize exactly what you just said all you're doing is rerunning those drama fearful violent like shitty programs oh pardon me <laughs> my language that's we're fine. just rewriting those over and over again so that's the whole thing of the new paradigm is self-responsibility i i have my practice to become more and more aware of what i'm projecting out into reality so I don't want to perpetuate violence and war. I don't want to perpetuate people lying and cheating and gossiping and being mean to one another. And, uh, you know, I know the pain of it because I've been there. Most of us have been systematized. That's why we're good teachers. Like most of us have gone through the indoctrination of this, of this, of the education system of, of the mainstream media model. And so that a lot of our awakening is, is how to unprogram ourselves. You know, the, again, these are us just looking at this whole experience from different angles. So you're absolutely right. I'm a huge advocate. It, the thing is, again, this is the juice of life is that when you when you do unplug, you see almost instantaneous results. Mm. <laughs> People with days or certainly within a week, they'll be like, oh, my God, like every day is just a little bit better. I'm like, yeah, because you're not bombarding your consciousness with negative, fearful thought streams. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's... That's one of the things that meditation's been so powerful for me is just switching off and then carrying that on through the day. I mean, I've never been on a meditation retreat, but I know from hearing other people talk about it, that's why one of the reasons like they're so powerful is because you're disconnecting from what you think the world is and who you think you are, mm -hmm. and you're creating the space to yes. be completely someone new without all that stimulation mm -hmm. continually bombarding you every day make conditioning you to think who you think you are <laughs> yeah pretty much exactly yeah. and then we have the extension of like our our family our environment 
you know, those more, I guess, I guess you'd say that those core wounds or childhood wounds from our very more intimate relationships as mm. well. And we're healing, we're healing those. So like, yeah, like you said, just being clear in mind, it, unplugging from the media is a really good way to, to start. And it's obviously really practical, right? So yeah, people can hopefully understand that. And it, and it gives such easy results that it's, you know, mm-hmm. meditation is amazing and the way to go, but it'll be easier to meditate if you're not watching TV all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah. They kind of go hand in hand though. I think if you want to start meditating, you almost naturally start to like, let go of the other. Mm. I would- yes, definitely. You begin to realize how powerful that negative programming is. Like yeah. it can rewire your brain from negativity so quickly like the especially when it's designed to trigger emotions and stuff it makes you vulnerable and you that's it exactly (laughs) yeah i was just thinking that as you said that and then i was like yeah and it constantly triggers people's primal it's like the sex and violence piece the drama and the, the kind of fear really triggers people people is it like the reptilian brain? Am I right in saying that? It triggers people's like fight flight responses. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like it's so obvious to me. It numbs the senses. So I, I like very few times where I tune back in to, to a, like to a TV cycle. It's like I realize how quickly I get, I get kind of mummified. Mm. Like very, quite quickly it can be like, oh, I want to buy that thing. And then I'm like, whoa, look at, look at what just happened. Yeah. I, it made me want to buy something I don't need. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, watching violent films or watching kind of like, you know, just not, not nice stuff. It really, it makes me feel, you know, it stresses me out. I can feel it in my body. So again, the more work, the more inner work I do and the more I clear those densities, the less I want them in my life. And so the truth is naturally by doing the inner work, you become more peaceful. And then suddenly you're like, oh, my life is a lot more peaceful. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the big bonuses is that when you realize how um, how easily those negative stimuli influence you, you can invert that and say, obviously it would take a bit more rewiring of the brain, but you can invert that and say that surrounding myself with positive stimuli will have you know a hugely mm-hmm. beneficial impact as well. You don't just have to be neutral, you can take it to the, the, the next level as well. You're so right. And that's the thing about why we're living in such amazing transformational times, because a lot of us have learned from YouTube. You know, a lot of us have been mentored by free, amazing content on the internet. And so that's the thing about this shift. It's like, we're almost living in a time where there's no excuses. Because like you just said, we can cut one energy stream out and pretty much solely focus on empowering ourselves you know, self-development, mm-hmm. learning, expansion. And that I think is really taking off, you know, in, in this w- weird state of sort of transition in the economy, the whole self-development, personal development, internet businesses, that stuff is all really starting to take off. So yeah. we, 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 we want to sort of be the, the pioneers of, you know, decentralizing the economy and opening up a more fair exchanging system. And it's, it's going to happen a lot faster than I think most of us think. Mm. Yeah. typically like because to me the the momentum of the energy is now just fully in full swing yeah it's an unstoppable force <laughs> yeah it is it totally is yeah. that's what it feels like it's like ah <laughs> and the, the, the thing that i love is that the more that people try and the people who want to maintain control the harder they try to do that the more that yeah. energy actually pushes back and the more people wake up, like the more ridiculous things yeah. the governments do, the more people actually wake up. <laughs> exactly, is- exactly. And then you get further, like, I mean, gosh, I it, I mean, this could sound really ridiculous to a lot of people, but like, I don't pay attention to any of that. No. Nah. Like, I'm aware, okay, I'm aware that like President Trump is the president of the United States. Yeah. Um. Like much more than that, I'm not really aware. But energetically, is because I've always like my early awakenings lifted the veil around the whole political system yeah. and the economy. So I've never been energetically very invested in it because, for me, I've seen through it. I'm like, oh my god, these people are a mess. 
we 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 need to fix. We need more love in the world. People, come on, yeah. you know. So I was never heavily invested in politics. Um, but I agree whenever I do tune in, I'm like, Oh my God, this is hilarious. Like, yeah. Do people actually believe it? Do people actually believe what these people are talking about? Cause I it just sounds, it, it sometimes honestly does sound like gibberish. To me. Yeah. It is, <laughs> it is crazy. But like, yeah, it's the way I see it is that the, the universe always seeks to restore balance. So when they, the bigger crazy thing that the, a government does for example the bigger the rebalancing so yeah. it's just like awesome we just win it's just a win-win situation really if you look at it in the right way <laughs> you're i agree i'm totally with you there it's like oh no everybody gets to win yeah because there's because it's all coming from love like because i don't i'm not angry at any of the politicians or I'm not even necessarily that angry. Sometimes I still do have lots of anger, but like, <laughs> you know, in my true heart, I'm not angry at the system even. I'm just like, oh, okay, we've learned a lot, right? Mm. It's time to move on. Yeah. It's time to make some changes. It's a really, it's a really grounded kind of love, you know, of just, okay, we've got lots of people here. How are we going to look after one another better? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when we make it just about our humanity and we make it just about our earth that we share, suddenly the answers seem really simple. And energetically, you can cut through the bullshit and call people out and be like, mm -mm -mm, <laughs> you're not going to play those silly games anymore because we're not going to tolerate that energy. Yeah. That's part of the anchoring of the new, the love, the divine forces is it's like not tolerating the the other. It's like, oh, ho, ho, you had fun, but now no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because it's it's. I suppose it's hard for people to see because it's on such a grand scale, global scale. The the chaos, but when you if you can, the behavior as a whole, you can kind of distill it down to like one individual person, and it's just that behavior but magnified on a global scale. And yes. it's not that difficult to understand yes. when you look at it in that way. <laughs> exactly like that's the thing about us really owning it and thinking we we had a lot of work to do on ourselves you know harmonize ourselves mm. harmonize our own personal relationships harmonize our own family and community right so like finding that it, well ultimately find a way to harmoniously communicate within yourself which loops us back into this whole being able to hold space for your negative and your positive polarities, mm -hmm. being able to accept and love your negative parts and your good parts, you know? So when we start to be able to do that within self, within our own entity being, that is that is the upliftment that helps to shine light for others and then others. And then suddenly we're like, more and more of us, we're like, oh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, I feel you. It just, it does, you know, there. it, it actually is kind of simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely, completely agree. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, um, I'd love it if you could just talk a bit more about your your work um, for the listeners, and obviously you've got the book. And um, if, yeah, if you could just talk a bit about uh, a bit more detail about what it is that you're doing on the on a day to day basis and that kind of stuff. Sure. Um. So, Alter Love. That's the, that's the company name. And I sell the book and I share free online content on YouTube and on Facebook, all to love page and on my Facebook profile page. A lot of it is just about getting to know me and just random insights and a lot of just chit chat really. And then based on the material of the book, which again is really this sort of encapsulation of my own 15 year spiritual awakening journey mm. in, in the step-by-step -step guide. So based on that material, I have my online tribe. So the Fearless Life tribe is where, again, I share most days and I also share different resources. So like I'd share this podcast, for example, <laughs> and um, I'd share maybe different like astrological insights I come across with the tribe and then the tribe share too. So it's, I guess you could say it's an online group coaching platform. It is a mm. paid subscription. So people pay every month and then um, the tribe just get kind of special discounts on all to love retreats and on private coaching with me. Um, and then I, I am working with a girl named Katie and she does burlesque and she teaches yoga and she also helps me with like the sales stuff and 
um, she's really good at doing spreadsheets and all, hmm. all like the numbers. So that's, I'm really lucky to, to be working with her and she's a very powerful, empowered woman, which is awesome. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we're just, we host retreats. And like I said, I'm based here in North Devon and I've been guided to this beautiful center, which is open to people of the new paradigm. If they want to hold space or hold gatherings here, we're kind of opening up to, to be able to do that and facilitate people in that way. Yeah. Um, and then I, oh, and then also we've just last around Christmas, we launched some clothes. So we're, we're collaborating with Rapa Nui clothing, which is a sustainable like clothing brand. And we're just playing around with different designs. So we now have like t-shirts and sweatshirts <laughs> and you know, the merch, the merch <laughs> sort of stuff. But of course we're trying to, you know, we want to be a sustainable and, we do advocate a vegan lifestyle. We advocate plastic free and, and um, zero waste to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also advocate the sustainable fashion. So I'm a big one for like, I only shop at charity shops. I shop intuitively or on eBay. So I try to really not um, buy into this, uh, you know, perpetual consumerist lifestyle. So mm -hmm. uh, we're learning, we're learning as we go. Definitely. Um, but my, my broader vision is just all to love, like more and more people like us doing what we're here to really do and keep speaking up and keep sharing. And, and, um, also as far as like a new paradigm business model goes, like making it very clear that we need to have a sustainable, functional money-making business, mm -hmm. but sort of making a promise to people that there's always transparency and there's also no shareholders. So there's no like people above me yeah. dictating what I do uh, and me just funneling my customers money up to the shareholders. Right. So there's no, it's transparent. I think that's a huge piece for new paradigm businesses. Yeah. You know, to make, to be open, to love money, to make money as a resource for your own creative power and what you're mm -hmm. going to build here. So be open to receiving lots and lots of money and enjoy it, <laughs> but don't be shady. Don't be shady. Right. Like don't yeah. be shady yeah. with what you're doing with your money. Be, be <laughs> upfront. I think we need to, we need to kind of uphold that because of all the shadiness that has happened in our, you know, in our, in the old paradigm. Yeah. So, we're just having to be really clear with ourselves about our intentions, why we do what we do. You know, it's not about hoarding. It's not about being greedy, but it is about sustainability and being open about how we make money and, you know, what we intend to do with all the money we make. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's so cool. And you definitely, you know, in a place where you're adding value and it's, you know, it's authentically, making money from a aligned place is not just money exactly. for the sake of money which is completely different mm -hmm. to a different it way is. of going about things well that's part of the old paradigm right the yeah. old paradigm is a system of enslavement mm. so in, we're the old paradigm is the mindset that like work is hard and life is miserable and you gotta just work hard to get by right Survival. like <laughs> it's like yeah it's like no people you're allowed to enjoy life you're allowed to be free you're allowed to just express your truth and be abundant you know <laughs> like but going from the like the slave to the empowered human is a bit of a journey and it's different for everybody so so patience and trust and faith those basics you know across the board ancient kind of teachings are are just with us and they're becoming more useful to us yeah we're finally remembering what's been said all along <laughs> i know i know it's going back to like oh it's actually kind of simple isn't it yes yes yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was been jesus was saying it two thousand years ago and we're only just remembering right? today <laughs> Right? Right? It's like, come on, guys, we know this. We do know this. Stop <laughs> pretending. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, I'd love it then if you could share some, like, last parting advice and on your take on how people can contribute to the rise of humanity. Oh, first thing that pops into my mind is just love yourself. Like, just love it all. Mm. Be courageous. Be bold. Be willing to speak up. Be willing to face your fears. Be willing to go after what you want without excuses. You know? Um, 
and also just you're safe and that we got this like i really have felt this shift and this anchoring of like we have got this and i often just my heart goes out to many many of the innocent people in the world that are in hardship and are in suffering and and as, you know as compassionate intelligent beings on this planet we owe it to one another you know we owe it to one another to love and to rise in compassion and to show one another what we're made of in love you know mm. because as we deepen our understanding and as we expand into our divinity it's going to unfold beautifully and miraculously and all we have to do is let go and trust mm. and have faith in one another keep believing in one another <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, do you want to, I don't know if you could just share with the listeners then where they can find out more about um, your website and your work sure. and all that stuff. Okay. So, so Alta Love is just altolove.com, A-L-L-T-O, love.com. Um, the book, The Fearless Life Guide and Alta Love Project is on amazon in in like hard copy and on kindle and it's also available on audible so i have done a, a vocal recording yay that was fun yeah. <laughs> um so you can get those on those three platforms which which is good and then really you can just peruse the alta love site and and navigate from there from from alta love you can find me on youtube i'm really focusing a lot on the youtube channel so you know i always appreciate people tuning in and subscribing and doing all that you know that's just another practicality of, of pioneering the online world is is being like asking people like subscribe hey help out that's <laughs> this is how we spread a message so i'm i'm really i know it sounds weird but i'm really softening to that like hey guys please subscribe to my channel hook it yeah. up um, and, and again like providing content and sharing every day so you can hook it up on youtube and then you can find me on instagram all to love on twitter all to love world and on facebook is also all to love world and again i share on all those platforms my personal profile is mj robertson i always welcome friend requests um and and just i'm really open at this point like if you find me on all those channels to engage i'm starting to really open up like what what is useful to people as they start this spiritual awakening journey what what information do you need from me you know how can i how can i get more clear how can i get better at channeling the information the messages that that our brothers and sisters need mm. so um so yeah, I really appreciate this. This has been highly enjoyable. Awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> um just yeah, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show and just a big thank you for coming on and uh, sharing all your awesome insights and the wisdom with the listeners today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love it. <clears throat> Awesome. So that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for listening and definitely be sure to check out Molly's work, uh, social media and her website full of awesome wisdom to really help you take your life to the next level and uh, engage in something bigger. So I'll put all the links that you need in the show notes for you to check out. So thank you all so much for listening and I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye bye.